Hello California anglers, I'm Cal Kellogg and it's time for This Week in Fishing. I'm going to be sharing all my hot destinations with you folks. We're going to be talking to Captain Monty Smith about what's going on in terms of trout and kokanee fishing down in the Motherlode region. Captain Kevin Brock is going to be joining us. He's going to be telling us about river trout fishing, shad fishing, striper fishing, and he's also going to give us a little bit of info about the Lake Oroville King Salmon Bite. Um, our special destination this week is Lake Davis, that Plumas County Trout Powerhouse. Um, that lake is coming to life. It's Get out some real nice fish um, and I'll be sharing one of my tactical tips with you guys to make you more effective on the water so anyway hang on let's jump right in and find out what's hot and what's not for this coming week I hope you got your chores done because the rain has stopped, the sun is out, temperatures are rising, and fish are on the chomp all over Central and Northern California. So let's jump right in. Eagle Lake. Eagle Lake, you know, you never know how the opener is going to go. The opener was this weekend. Is it going to be slow? Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be okay? Well, I'm happy to report that this year, Fishing, fishing on the opener was absolutely red hot. I got a report from Dan Valdez and Gary McFarland. Uh, they drove up there, man. They went through lightning and rain, and when they got on the water, they caught 20 big, beautiful rainbows, and they said they were hitting everything. They got them on spoons, flies, grubs. Pretty much whatever they wanted to pull was getting hit. So that's awesome news. Um, Eagle Lake it's a great option if you like catching rainbow trout and if the spring fishing's good that means the fall fishing's going to be even better so that's exciting news for folks up there in Spalding and all across northern California um, right next door Lake Elmanor Captain Brian Ricucci Big Daddy's Guide Service he continues to bang huge rainbows in fact they seem to be getting bigger he's targeting pockets of bug activity and he's power trolling with hardware spoons primarily and he's nailing you know rainbows average fish is three and those fish are ranging all the way up to seven and eight pounds just incredible fishing at Lake Elmanor um, finally the California Delta Guys seem to be, you know, walking away from the Delta right now, and uh, I don't know why, because some of the best fishing of the year is going on as we speak. Um, sturgeon fishing. Captain Hayden Mullins of Dragon Sport Fishing, he just finished his season out there on limits of sturgeon, oversized sturgeon, slot-sized sturgeon, just wide open action, multiple hookups, incredible sturgeon fishing in the upper reaches of Sassoon Bay. Um, Captain Joe Gomez of Golden State Sport Fishing, while he's still at it, he's putting his anglers on limits, oversized fish, fish are jumping, fish are diving. It's just an incredible sturgeon bite. It doesn't get any better for California anglers than it is right now in terms of sturgeon fishing. Row, eel, put in your time, deal with some spring wind, and you're going to hook fish. So if you want to fill a tag, if you've never caught a sturgeon, Get out there and get after them. This is your absolute best opportunity. Maybe the best sturgeon fishing we've seen in five or six years. So that's a great option. And of course, the Delta Striper fishing continues to amaze. There's no end in sight. It might go on for another two weeks. It might go on for another month. Who knows? Bottom line is, if you get out there, guys are getting limits. Average fish is five. They're ranging up to 12. You can drift live bait. You can soak cut bait. Uh, you know, your chicken liver, sardines, pile worms, all that stuff's working. You can throw swim baits, plugs. You can troll. That's a no-brainer. You can spoon them. You can get them on bucktail jigs. Um, flies. Everything's working. Limits are the rule. Jeff Soho's been out there of Jeff Soho Sport Fishing, um, and, and he's whacking them on spoons and bucktails. Um, there was one guy, uh, you might have saw the video I did on him. He was soaking a jumbo bloodworm off the bank of the Sacramento River, and he got a 48-pound fish. Those big trophies are available right now. So this is the time, guys. Get out there. Get after those fish. Figure out what you want to fish for, and you are going to hook up. It's a, it's a great time of the year. We've had a prolonged spring. Everything's about a month behind, so we are right at the peak of the spring season now.
All right, folks. Well, we've got Captain Monty Smith of Gold Country Sport Fishing on the line, and he's going to tell us all about the trout and kokanee action that's taking place down in the Motherload region. What's going on, Monty? Hey, Cal. How you doing? Doing well, man. I, I know you're doing well, too. You've been catching a lot of fish this last week. Yeah, we've been doing well. We've been fishing uh, Don Pedro, uh, catching some really nice kokanee up to two pounds. Wow. And... And some rainbows, mm-hmm. and we've also been fishing new Malonies. All right. Um, so new Malonies is producing some nice quality kokanee, along with some very impressive browns being caught. So uh, both places are producing on a great level. How how are the guys catching the browns at new Malonies? Are they catching them on kokanee gear? Or are they are they fishing specifically for the browns? I haven't asked Cal, but I believe that there are incidental catches mm-hmm. running kokanee gear. Oh, uh, wow. I mean, I've caught browns over there in past years on my pink apexes, um, okay. maybe some purple hoochies or even a purple apex. Gotcha. That, you know, does produce some nice quality browns. And most guys are releasing the, the browns. So. Good deal. How big are the kokanee at New Maloney's and how are you catching them? The kokanee new Malonies are anywhere from 13 to uh, about 16 inches. Oh, wow. And that's okay. respectively um, all hooch, basically hoochies. I mean, the day we were there, we were catching them on like a pink sling blade, pink and chrome sling blade with a micro pink hoochie uh, at about 30 feet. Good and deal. When they got tired of the pink, they they started with, a, with an orange hoochie. So... Uh, Mix it up, pinks, right, right. orange, uh, even some greens or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't be afraid. I mean, if you're barking fish and you're not getting bit, you need to change some uh, some some stuff. Well, those are fun size kokanee. That's when they start getting big enough to rip it off the downrigger and jump around behind the boat and all that kind of stuff. Uh, tell us about Don Pedro. I understand that the kokanee are are running bigger at Don Pedro than they are at uh, at New Maloney's. Yeah, you're right, Cal, because you know, the, Don, the kokanee at Don Pedro, the bite may not be as fast as New Maloney's, but the last time we were out, we had a couple, plus a couple limits before noon mm-hmm. and rainbows. Uh, basically the same gear, pinks, orange. Uh, I like I like purple purple on occasion. Depends mm-hmm. on what the, the weather do, does. Okay. Um, you know, anywhere from 35 to 50 feet at, at New Maloney, or Don Pedro. They're a little bit deeper over there. Mm-hmm. So, But the quality of fish, I mean, two-pound kokanee, yeah. um, that's, that's that's an incredible fish. That's an awesome fish, and uh, yeah, that's a that fish looks good in your smoker, that's for sure. How deep are they at Don Pedro? Same kind of depth situation going on over there? A little deeper, a little deeper, Cal, like 35, 35 to 50 Uh Okay. We'll occasionally mark them deeper. Sometimes we try to chase them. Sometimes they bite. Sometimes they, they don't. For the most part, the sweet spot is about 40, 40, 45 feet. Wonderful. Now, you, do you have some upcoming spots if people want to join you on the water and get out there after some of those landlocked salmon? I do, Cal. I've, I've got some room. Uh, don't wait around because um, it, it could shut off. Don Peter could shut off at any time. Normally, it's it lasts till July. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Last year it lasted all the way till the end of August. Um, but that's kind of out of the norm. But New right. Maloney's has got a great bite going. Uh, don't wait. Get, you know, give me a call. You know. Um, What's your number? 209-581-4734. Okay. Or check my website out. We got a. I got a full blog on there that tells kind of how the day went. Right. Well, go to Gold Country Sport Fishing. You know, um, I, I think you're exactly right, and, too. I, I remember a couple of weeks ago, you posted a picture of a fish that was already starting to get a hooked jaw. And uh, that kind of shocked me. But that makes total sense if that bite's going to shut down, you know, in a month or so or start shutting down, that they're kind of kind of seeing the first stages of them changing. That's right, Cal. Because even the last time I was at Don Peter, we caught one. He had a button on his nose. Mm-hmm. And he had he actually had the appearance of teeth sticking out already. Okay. Um, I did take a picture of it because a lot of people are not going to believe me, but you know there's proof positive right. in that picture, and there was oh, well. actually teeth. Uh, 
He was not absorbing his scales, though. Uh, the fish right. at that Don Pedro are the brightest fish I've ever seen at that lake, and that just kind of showed you what two two good solid years of fresh water. Yeah, uh, coming into that lake can do a little rain. That's amazing. Well, Monty, I know you've been out fishing all weekend, and uh, I'm going to let you go. But uh, thank you for the report, and we'll be talking to you uh, again next week. And you can tell us what's going on down there in the mother load. Appreciate it, Monty. Hey, thank you, Cal, very much. Bye-bye. You bet. Now, folks, if you want to jump on the water with somebody who really knows how to do the, you know, the controlled depth trolling with light tackle, that's Monty Smith. You're going to catch some fish. You're going to have a good time, but you are going to learn a ton. I know I have over the past, you know, several years. I've been out with him many times. Um, he is a walking encyclopedia. He's a very humble guy. Um, he doesn't strut around like he knows everything, but uh he knows his stuff. So if you don't have a boat, you want to get out, get out for some kokanee, by all means, jump on Monty's, you know, his big willy boat. Even if you do have a boat and you want to learn the finer points of trolling for rainbows, kings, and kokanee, I'd urge you to book a trip with Monty Smith. A very nice guy. And uh, once again, you're going to learn a ton about trout and kokanee trolling. Fish on the other ride. Man, what a bite. What an incredible bite we're into. That one was at eight feet and that was right at two miles an hour. It was just starting to speed back up. I was starting to put that other lure back into water and uh, wham. There, humdinger! Woohoo! Gotta like that. And my troll here has been about 800 yards long, but I think I think I'm gonna cut that in half because this far end is where the wind's blowing down the length of the lake, and this is where the best action's been. This is where we've got the most ripple, probably the most current, and the fish are really concentrating here in about a, I don't know, three or four hundred yard area. So. Anytime you can start cutting the lake down and work in a more defined area, the better off you are. If the bites are there, work them hard. Work them until they stop biting or you get tired of, you know, reeling them in. But, uh, yeah, try to cut the lake down. See, a lot of guys, they just catch a fish and they keep on trolling. And sometimes you have to. But if you can cut the body of water down and start working a defined area, the smaller the area you can work and get hit in, the better off you are because you're in the zone all the time so cutting a lake down to size that's one thing a lot of trollers miss out on when the fish are aggressively feeding and they were that day when i was out on my kayak the bite was already good but when i saw that wind develop i knew the fish were going to concentrate into the area of the highest amount of current and if i upped my speed that i was just going to kill them and i did i was getting double hookups i could barely keep my lines in the water um, when you're out on the water, you can find action like that created by wind. Um, sometimes it'll develop around points or narrows uh, adjacent to deep drop-offs along steep dropping banks. Whatever the situation is, when you catch one fish, you should always work that area a little bit more. If you catch another fish, start working it hard. If the fish are aggressively feeding, that's the time for you to get out your aggressive confidence bait stuff you control fast that's the time to break out the humdingers the minnow plugs and keep shrinking that area of the lake you're fishing down and that's how you rack up big scores of trout very quickly i see too many guys out on the water they hook a fish and they keep right on trolling you don't want to do that when you hook a fish always go back through that area if you get another one start inching up your speed if your instincts are telling you these fish are aggressive and they're actively feeding you get aggressive Get after them. Get in their face. And I guarantee you, the rewards are going to be great. And take full advantage of it. You never know how long a bite like that is going to stick around. If it's a wind-driven bite, as soon as that wind backs off, the bite's going to die. Conditions change. So when you've got that window of opportunity, take full advantage of it. Get out those confidence baits. Get in the fish's face. 
pound them hard, and you're going to rack up those big scores. All right, folks, I have Captain Kevin Brock of FishKevinBrock.com on the line here, and he's been out all weekend, and he's been catching a little bit of everything. Seems like everything he fishes for, the bite is pretty much wide open. You know, it's that time of the year. How are you doing, Kevin? What's going on? Hey, hey, Cal. Hey, how are you, my friend? Uh, things are going good over here. You know, we're, we're just bouncing all over the place. June is the, always the late May. June is always just the, the crazy time of year because everything's happening still. Yep. Um, you know, let's start with stripers. Um, you know, I thought it was kind of dwindling out. It looked like, you know, what where we were at, Calusa, we might have been slowing down. Water came up a little bit. It was super muddy. Had a boat out today. What happens? We get limits of stripers. Nice. The same old, old school sardine. You know, I put that cure that I use on there. It just seems to enhance it a little better. The fish bit. We caught a bunch of shakers, a bunch of keepers. Everybody had a great time. Yep. You know, here it is, late May, and we're whacking limits of stripers out of Calusa. So that's the first thing that's still going. Um, you know, again, water's money. You've got to go bait. Uh, the swim baits and the minnows will probably work in a few days when the water clears up again. But for the next two or three days, you got to fish pile worm sardines. You know, that's, right. that's the combination you want to have with you if you're fishing bait. Mm -hmm. So then we jumped over to Lake Orville today. Uh, we had one boat on, on the sack fishing stripers. Came over to Lake Orville, caught a limit of salmon, just trolling normal flashers and hoochies. And we wow. found fish anywhere. Found a lot of fish shallow. Believe it or not, I was pretty excited about that at like 15 feet. Wow. So I was running, you know, I was, I was stacking three riggers, and shoot, we were doing uh, 25, 20, and 15 feet, and every one of them was getting bit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> pretty cool. That is cool. Very good. Yeah, just, just little, little hoochies, little white hoochies. You can tip them with anchovies. You can tip them with sardines. I really like sardines. I think they're more oily. Yep. Same thing, I use that cure that I make. Mm -hmm. I know I talk about it a lot, but that's what I've always used for years, and it just works. It toughens up the bait a little bit. You get to fish mm -hmm. it longer, and the fish seem to like it. They so, like you know, it. when I got them where they've got half that hoochie, half that hoochie down their throat, I know that something's going yes. on, you know, when they got that on there. They smear that all over there. So that seems to help. Mm -hmm. So then, what, two nights ago, we jumped over out of Butte City uh, before the water came up over there, fish shad, had over 100 shad. Oh my so gosh! Out the evening, it was nonstop, double triples, double triples, wide wow. open. And I heard guys were catching them all the way down. Now, with the muddy water that happened, that just came down the last couple of days, mm -hmm. it's going to tone the shad bite down a little bit. But down from Verona down to the American River, as it clears, you know you're going to start seeing a lot more shad coming, and it's, it's going to be really good. So I know those yeah. Verona guys were getting a bunch. So that's right. that's always cool. If you like shad, that thing's happening. You know, okay. then, so yes, see, I, I get all the days. <laughs> we fish every day, Cal. You know, we're always fishing somewhere e around, all around. Everybody so, loves shad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yesterday we fished uh, at a Redding. One of the boats fished out of Redding. Had mm -hmm. over 30 rainbows and some big ones, too. Uh, some of those big old fish after the spawn were, you know, are healing up and everything. So they're uh -huh. looking good. And uh, got, you know, I didn't weigh it because we released everything. But it was 25 inches. You know, wow. it was in the five and a half, six pound class. Yeah. Several fish in the threes and fours. You know, nice, nice big fish. They're released mm -hmm. unharmed, and we just keep catching them year after year. It's wow. fantastic. This is the <laughs> time to fish. You know, we're we're out here at Orville. I'll be out here at Orville tomorrow. We came back out for the evening. Guys mm -hmm. are catching bass on the shore. Bass boats are running around. They're catching fish. It seems like everywhere people are going right now in the lakes, you know, and the, and the rivers are catching fish. I don't know how the streams are doing, you know, uh, up above in the high mountain streams because the water's probably pretty high. So let's right. wait a little bit on that uh, for things to warm up a little bit. But the lakes are starting to pop. Yep. The river's still going for striper opportunities. Oh, and check this out. So what was it, five days before that, the last time we talked, I ended up one day over there on the, uh, on the, uh, on the Feather River, uh -huh. below Shanghai Bend there, and it took us most of the day, but we got... Uh, three limits of stripers over there and a bunch of shakers over there. So it wasn't wide open, but shoot, anytime you can go out and catch limits of stripers and a handful more, that's pretty good fishing. Absolutely. So it's, just a cool, it's just a cool time of year, man. It's just, you can go fishing somewhere everywhere you go and you can catch some fish right now. I saw yep. a couple other boats out trolling on Orville. They were holding up some, some salmon, you know, and so they were excited. They were catching some. So it's not, you know, wide, wide open, but definitely enough to catch a limit. 
Absolutely. It sounds great. Well, that's awesome, Kevin. How do folks get a hold of you if they want to get in on some of this this awesome action we're seeing right now? You know, they can reach us anytime. You know, at the 800 number at 800-995-5543. Uh, 800-995-5543. And, um, you know, they can, we can hang out. We can talk about whatever fishing they want to do. You mm-hmm. want to get kids involved? We'll get kids involved. You want to get a bunch of fish going on? You want action? We'll make it happen, whatever you want to do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you go home and put that boat away and get back out there again tomorrow, and uh, we'll talk well, again we'll, we'll next week. To, we'll be ready to go tomorrow. So, Excellent, sir. Well, thank thank you for your time. Thanks for uh, sharing hey, your info with us. You you bet. Tell everyone thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity you you know, to do what we do out here on the lake and, and everything else, and, and uh, we appreciate it. We can't wait to catch some more fish with everybody else. I'm going to be going with you soon. I got to get a free day, but I want to go whack some shad. Yeah. I haven't caught some in a while. Oh, so. yeah. And now you're now you're talking. You know, and, they, and we got reports and all that other stuff. You know, at fishkevinbrock.com too. You know, right okay. on the web, they can check us out there. Awesome, so they can man. Just any way they want. All righty. Well, we'll catch you next time, Kevin. Okay. Thanks, sir. Okay. Thanks, Cal. Bet. Well, that that's for me, guys. You know, I like to go out and get after big fish, and that's all fun and games. But uh, I have a date with Kevin Brock and. Uh, Hopefully the shad bite, you know, holds up long enough for me to get out there. I got to go do some more trout fishing, but I want to go whack a bunch of shad. If you've never gone shad fishing, it's just fun. You lose one, you're going to hook another one right away on a good day. So, and you heard him. He had like a hundred fish the other night and, uh, Man, they fight hard. They pull. They're they're unique looking fish. I might keep a couple to eat. Um, I want to try them out. I got some. I got some guys telling me that they're super good, and I've heard that many times. So I kind of got a plan. But uh, anyway, if you want to get out, catch a bunch of fish in in the river, or explore Lake Oroville, whatever. Um, don't hesitate to jump on the boat with Kevin Brock. He's a true pro. He's been doing it for you know two and a half decades. He knows his stuff. He's one of the best in the game, and you'll have a great time. Fish on. All right, on the dick knife. What a beautiful fish. Wow. Look at that. Oh, what a hog. And that's a dandy trout. Look at that beautiful rainbow. What a dandy fish. Wow. Awesome. Just totally awesome. Let me get reorganized here. Get him on a stringer and uh, get back at it. Our destination this week is Lake Davis. Um, I landed that 24 inch rainbow up at Davis last October and uh, I can't wait to get back there this spring. The bite is on and it's gonna get even better. Let's start with an overview of the lake. Um, Davis was formed in 1966 with the completion of the dam. Um, It's about five miles long and two miles wide. Um, It's a shallow lake and very weedy. Um, Has an average depth of about 20, 21 feet. Um, And those weeds support an epic population of aquatic insects, and those insects fuel the trout fishery. And the trout get very large at Davis very quickly. Um, In terms of services, uh, the lake is located, it's up in Plumas County, it's located near the town of Portola that offers everything from gas to food, lodging, tackle, and more. So the lake's very user-friendly, and uh, anglers travel from all over to fish there. Guys from Reno love to fish the lake, Truckee, Quincy, I go there from Forest Hill on just a day trip. Um, Of course, guys from Sacramento and the Bay Area find their way up to Davis as well. Um... There's a lot of campgrounds at the lake. There's a lot of launch ramps at the lake. So it's easy to get out on the water and catch a limited trout at Davis. Now, there, you know, over time, there's been a lot of drama at Lake Davis. Um, from the late 60s through the early 90s, it was known as just an epic trout fishery. 
Um, but then in the mid 90s, apparently someone planted pike in the lake and pike became a real problem. Um, the DFW did not want the pike getting into the Feather River because then they would have been loose in the Delta and that would have been a disaster. So they poisoned the lake a couple times in the 90s. They tried to kill the pike off. Apparently it didn't work. By 2007, the pike were back. The DFW poisoned the lake again and, and it looks like they got them all. There's been no pike reported since then. Um, and the lake has been heavily planted and the trout population has taken a hold again. Um, the trout have gotten very large. There's big numbers of trout in the lake. And, uh, and I could tell you the fishing is just absolutely phenomenal there. So let's take a look at how you can go up there and catch some fish. Um, fly anglers do very well at the lake, working things like damselflies, woolly boogers, and a variety of you know smaller offerings. Um, your bank anglers, bank anglers go out there with you know standard stuff, and they they just spank them, you know, inflated worms, uh, a bobber and fly, even power bait works well there, and. Uh, go up there you know until the water gets warm and and expect to catch a limited trout fishing off the shore but uh you know davis is is really good for trollers and that's what i like to do i like to take my kayak up there paddle that shallow water and just round up a bunch of trout and uh, hopefully you get into a big one i mean i know a fish to 27 inches that have already been caught this spring so i got my sights set on a big boy so a variety of different lures will work, but I'm going to bounce some of my favorite offerings off of you guys. So here we go. Let's, let's get started. Of course, the lake's up in the high Sierras. It sits at an elevation of about 5,800 feet, and that means flatfish work well up there. The F7, uh, the larger one, that'll work well, but the one I really like is the F5. Now, frog... Is a, is a great choice, but other colors will work too. Your brown hues, even orange hues will work. But uh, man, when I'm in the high Sierras, I like to run that frog pattern. So run that from one to maybe one and a half miles an hour. That's a killer at Davis. Um, that fish you saw me uh, catch on the opening, well, that fish grabbed a, uh, a brass an orange Dick Knight spoon. Now this is the, the medium sized Dick Knight. When I caught that fish, I was running a tiny one like this, like this copper version. So Dick Knight's top offering for Davis. The fish feed on bugs. So if you go small, you're kind of in the strike zone. They expect to feed on, on relatively small stuff. So small spoons like Dick Knight's work well. As do the, uh, the Vance's Tackle Sockeye Slammers. This one's copper and chartreuse. That's a great color for Davis. Um, in general... I like the brass. I like the subtler stuff at Davis. Uh, chrome lures have their place up there. They absolutely work. But uh, you're going to do better with the brass, the gold stuff, the more subtle stuff. If you like to pull Rapalis, don't hesitate to pull the old perch pattern Rapala. Go with a relatively small Rapala. But uh, they work really well. If you like pulling stuff from Max Lure, your Cripple Lure, your... Uh, red and brass or your brass and orange cripple lures they are right at home at davis pull them right at two miles an hour uh, check them frequently for weeds with that treble hook on there but uh, they will pounce all over that now if you get up there the hardware is not working the plugs aren't working you're struggling a little bit of course a threaded worm will work that works great if you don't want to get your fingers dirty you don't want to fish that dirty bait which you know me i have no problem <laughs> fishing those worms but if you don't want to fish a worm, don't hesitate to put on a small Berkeley power grub in some kind of natural hue. It could be motor oil, an olive hue, a brown hue like that. They all work. No blades, no nothing. Just troll that naked. Troll it slow, one mile an hour. Make sure you got a good trolling swivel on there because that thing's going to spin and make a big mess if you if you don't accommodate that. But uh, grubs work very well. They work great at Eagle Lake. They work just as well at Lake Davis. Now, when I'm at Davis and I want to catch a big fish, even though my biggest Lake Davis fish came in that tiny dick night, but when I'm there and I want to catch a big fish, you know what I'm reaching for. I'm reaching for my Arctic Fox trolling flies, just like that. To each up pattern works great there. Um, I had Really good success last fall on a rainbow trout pattern, which is real similar to the Tui Cheb, except it's got a little blue and a little pink in it. Um, and orange. Orange works, you know, orange, rust color works great throughout the Sierra. 
orange colored arctic fox flies they work fantastic at davis so that's kind of an overview those are the lures i use your mileage may vary a little bit up there but just remember it's a it's a lake that is full of big rainbows um it's not a bait fish lake so i wouldn't you know i wouldn't bust out my three and a half inch spoons and troll at four miles an hour that'll probably work part of the time but in general get out your offerings that you like to troll slow your subtle stuff your stuff that has subtle colors and uh, you're gonna do just fine um and the trout you know I, I haven't fished it a ton since the poisoning so i'm not sure really what the best areas are i really like to launch up at the lightning tree and fish down towards the island in fact i want to i want to camp out on that island a little bit this year so me and lucy that's kind of the plan i'm gonna take my little backpack and tent out there spend a the night on the lake um, that should be pretty cool. So anyway, if you like trout fishing and you haven't fished Davis in the last few years, I strongly urge you to get up there. Davis is back. The trout population is robust and uh, they're hungry. I know guys, like I said, I, I know guys caught 27, 28 inch trout this year so far. Uh, Paul Nealand of the Fish Sniffer was up there. Him and his partner, they had like 19 fish to 20 plus inches. I want to say they had a 23 inch or so. If you like battling big, hard fighting rainbows, beat a path to Lake Davis. It's going to be great this spring. And it's going to be even better this fall. So I'm going to be there both. I'm going to be there this spring. I'm going to be back up there in October. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, that's our destination this week. Lake Davis. Get there. Be square, baby. Anyway. <laughs> We'll be back next week with another uh, another awesome fishing destination here in the Golden State.